I'm eating, I'm eating a cookie now. Something bad happens when you get back to the barge. Fuck oh, yeah, cookies. Like can we can we just like go one day without something bad happening? <laughs> no. Because this morning was the 18th. Which means yeah. Choreo Fireblood came around. And you have a standing uh, orders to Linda <laughs> that if Choreo comes and we're not here, just go ahead and pay the man. Do I have that correct? Yes. Yeah. Here's yes. what happened instead. I scoured my notes. I could not find the man's name, but Gus has a drunk friend staying on the barge currently. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Do you remember the man's name? No. He was that um I, I, that I black jacket. Not, we, not black jacket. Uh, a moss green, cap. Moss cap. We might not have given him a name yet. He he there was a name, I just don't remember I what can't, it was. If there was, it didn't get didn't saved realize, in my notes. I didn't realize Gus had a man whore. Oh. <laughs> So when you get there, Linda is in a very bad mood. Well, what else is new? And she indicates, she's usually not in this bad a mood. She indicates that the man, who I guess we'll just run to fantasy name generators real quick. And come up with a name. I guess I could look at the video and tell you what it is. Nah, this is, this is better. Wow, if you go to the D&D the &D human name generators, these are some garbage names. Judgmental. <laughs> so, you say that, but when you hear the name I pick, Hecram Div? That's a name. That's not a human name. It is now. <laughs> Hecram? Hecram. That's a thing you feed to, like, pink dogs in Chrono Cross. They're bone, the bones of. Here's what Hecram did. Hecram had sobered up by the morning. Mm -hmm. And Linda had found him, you know, something to eat, knowing that he's your guest. And he kind of made himself at home. When Corio Fireblood came in, and none of you were there, Hecarim got into an argument with him. Oh, no. Hecarim explains that Corio came around, and in Hecarim's words, began demanding payments of 500 gold. Hecarim said... That he thumped the man, but good, chased him out, and said if he ever came back to bother his friend Gustavus again, he'd thump him twice. I've half a mind to thump you right into the uh, into the bay. And his <laughs> smile, his proud-looking smile, just completely fades away, and he looks shocked Lucius, and hurt. Lucius gestures to the very massive and very gaudy portrait of Corio Fireblood on the wall in our, office, <laughs> in our front office. And he turns like around to... and looks behind him. I'd like to point out that... And he looks back at Lucius. Nothing, says, nothing that, that, like was, that wasn't the man, was it? Was that the same... You, you actually yeah, owed him 500... Yes, We owe did. him lots more than 500 gold pieces. And he looks at Gus and says, I may have made a terrible mistake hey, you may have cocked it up yes you may have. i grab the man by his ear and say and say linda may i please have the 500 gold and, and linda say, produces I'll, I'll, does she have access to this money oh yeah i think it's i think it's like i think we dispersed it by bank note i thought that's what, how we did this okay no we haven't been to the bank in a while oh uh, we trust linda it's fine that's never gonna bite, bite us in the ass she produces the money so i'll, I'll take the 500 gold. i'll take care of it Oh, uh, when when is the because uh, we have until tomorrow to go in? Right now it's an e right now it's about evening. Right. Okay. Uh, so you like, need to go smooth this over with Corio tonight because this we is, have now. This, this is this, this is my fault. I'll go. Linda, you guys are very lucky that Alex isn't there because you would totally turn this guy over to the boss caps immediately. <laughs> hey, Linda. Going with Linda. Linda. Do do me a favor and just take tomorrow off. No. Linda, we are currently under investigation. We need you. <laughs> Do we really want to put Linda in the sight of the uh, black jackets? Absolutely. She is a she is a paid responsible employee of our business. Has we run anyone... a business, guys. We run a business. Has anyone <laughs> removed the five hundred from the sheet yet? No. no. Okay, I'm doing that right now. Okay. Thank you. Gus. Putting it on Gus. It's just part of the chain. You cross town. Over to, uh... Florian's going too, by the way. 
You're going with Gus? Yeah. Very well. That leaves Seeker and myself to uh, assemble our notes on the flying pig. Oh, I won't be doing that. Over to the Chestnut Pie Inn, where you know that Corio is staying. It's in the evening, so at this point, Journey is giving her a uh, kind of evening powwow with some of the people at the hearth. Corio is not in evidence, at least down in the common room. And you make an inquiry of him? Yes. To which... Uh, Merriweather, the proprietress of the Chestnut Pie Inn, tells you that the poor man's feeling under the weather and has asked to receive no visitors tonight, but that well, she will send a message to him in the morning. Gus has a hold of uh, Hecarim's ear and says, well, I have the reason why he feels bad right here. And Oh, you're dragging get... him with you. Yes. No, His I have his ass by the ear. Okay. I'm going to make him apologize. And she says that's very well, but as I say, the man's not feeling well. Perhaps return where's, tomorrow morning? Where's Mr. Third Party? <laughs> she sends one of the uh, one of the girls upstairs. And Mr. Third Party comes down. Because my understanding is the only thing that is required of our contract is that uh payment be witnessed by mr third party okay so third party comes down and he also seems very upset although he has not been thumped yeah and he you definitely see him recognize hecarim as you again i have hecarim by the ear sure because i'm ta- probably taller than he is you're taller than everybody yeah and so what do you tell third party hi mr third party we apologize this man was a guest on our boat, and he seems to have done you a disservice. And we would like to pay our five hundred our, our dues. We had left instructions for them to be paid, as we were otherwise unable to attend. But third party looks him up and down. You brought him here to answer for the injury. I brought him here to apologize. Yes. And what do you offer in way of apology? He asked Hecarim. Hecarim kind of. Well, he would look down at his toes, but that'd be very painful because you're holding him by the ear. And he kind of stammers about it. He doesn't really know what to say. He's expecting some payment or recompense. This man, and I'll look at him and go, he goes, I'll owe Mr. Fireblood a personal favor. That's my understanding that you're already in Master Fireblood's employ. Outside of that, he is in our he is in our employee for a very specific thing. He asks if you're aware of a. Uh, ooh, I gotta look up this other character's name now. I'm bad Before at names. Give a shifty glance to Gus. To Gus? Yeah, that's probably merited. Hey. What I'm is sorry. uh? What's Lucius's friend's name? Oh. Um, I have this, uh... Listen, I've heard this man's sob story. I am not le- leaving him to the wolves. <laughs> I cannot do that. You are so lucky Alex is in wizard jail. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Where that... It was, it's in my notes. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, Elman. Hey, Elman. Elman, uh, Elman for Neros. Uh, he asks... Third party asks you guys if you know Elman. He's apparently a friend of Lucius's. I've... Never met the man, no. Um, this is a rather sensitive subject to broach, but apparently Elman has began to spread a rumor that is perhaps dangerous to Master Fireblood's activities here in town. You know, he's trying to establish his his bloodline and his house in good standing with Dunfoss and nobility. Mm-hmm. Apparently, someone has told this uh, Elman, and I'm understand that your man Lucius in, uh, introduced the two. Elman is spreading a rumor that my master Fireblood goes with boys, if you take my meaning, he says a little to make sure that he's not overheard by the surrounding crowd. Florian it... gives an uncharacteristically sharp inhale. <laughs> pinches his nose. He said, does it... Uh, Master Fireblood was hoping to clear this up with Lucius and the rest of you this morning. He was, of course, rather hurt by the rumor 
And then the unpleasantness, he says, as he stares daggers at Hecarim. Mm -hmm. He tells you that he will accept the payment in good faith, but the further matters will have to be settled by Mr. F by Master Fireblood in person. That is that is acceptable. All right. We do apologize for the inconvenience and the the circumstances. He goes, it won't happen again. We'll reduce your debt by 500 gold. You got it. Does anybody else have anything to do with uh, with third party before before he goes back? Okay. What do you do with Hecarim? I'm going to let go of his ear and just grab him by the shoulder really tightly and say, come on. You're taking him back to the barge? I am taking him back to the barge. He now works for us because he's got a debt to pay. What are Seeker and Lucius doing? I, I am shanghaiing this man. <laughs> okay, that's... Th th that, I think, needs to be put up to committee, but anyway. <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with that when you get back. Um, got an iron grip on his is... Lucius is going to compile everything that we have on the flying pig. Do you include the hand in that? That's... As far as I know, the flying hand, the, the, the hand was something completely unrelated to the pig. No, it was not, because he specifically sent a servant to your location, knowing that you have it, to negotiate for its release into his care. It is absolutely connected to the flying pig case. The flying pig wants it, and you have it. And you don't even know what it is yet. Yeah, we need to find out exactly what it is tonight. Are you guys doing something about that while they're out getting drunk at the tavern without you? We're not getting drunk. I'm sending messages out, and then I'm going to go talk to someone. All right, who are you sending messages to? I am sending a message to Journey and to. Give me one second here. <laughs> uh, what was to the other guy's name? Shemreth Surefoot. Surefoot? Yeah. Okay. Shemreth Shemreth. And to Oswald at the 56 card. Yeah. Uh, telling them that the Flying Pig is currently under investigation, and while we'll try to keep their name out of it, uh, if they have any info. Uh, currently under investigation by the Black Jackets. And one of our members has been detained, and we'll, we'll try to keep their involvement private. If they have anything to offer that would help them look look away from us, that would be a, assistance. you got to condense Basically, it down to 25 just, words or less. What? It's message, right? No, no, I'm literally going to pay someone to bring them a message. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. No, yeah. Uh, go ahead and mark that off. How much are you willing to spend on these? Uh, I figure I'll just get, like, a neighborhood kid to send them, so maybe, like, a silver each. A silver each, okay. Are you expecting a response tonight? Uh, if they have a response, I'll ask the kid to bring it back, but if they don't, like, they, they don't need to wait any longer, just ask them if they have a response. Okay. And then I'm gonna go talk to, um, our D Demon's Bane friend. Warlock's Bane? Warlock's Bane, yeah, She lives all the way on the other side of the town, so you're gonna be well into That's the my night. night. Okay. Yeah. Is Alexander doing anything to try to escape? No. Alexander. Uh, part of your cell. You have some fresh air coming in. High up on the wall. You have a small circular uh, kind of grate. If there weren't an iron bar running down vertically and then horizontally in like a plus shape, you'd be able to squeeze your hand outside. But with the bar mm -hmm. in place, you wouldn't be able to get more than a finger or two. Okay. On the other side, the opposite side of the room from that, I guess, window, we'll call it charitably, uh, down at the ground level, there's a kind of uh, drain in the wall that looks kind of similar. It looks similar size, except you can only see a half circle. And this is if you spill something or just pee all over the floor, it can drain away you are presented with a chamber pot you are given meals you do have a uh not a particularly comfortable mat but it is clean to lay on and they provide you with a wash basin as well at night when they bring me my meals i'll ask if i can get a cigarette for my things
the jailer can't get you anything out of your things because the black jackets are going through them all. Fair. But he might be able to sneak you in some tobacco. What's what's the catch? Were you carrying any coin when you were brought in? Some. He asks how much you'll promise him. How illegal is it for... How much trouble do you and I get into if I get caught? And who? how do we make sure I don't get caught? He laughs. He says he doesn't get in trouble at all. He tells them that you used your magic wizard nonsense to spoil his mind. I'll pass then. Thanks. <laughs> he seems to think every interaction with you is great fun. But, part through the night. Are you Do you sleep or do you make an effort to stay awake? Can I get a rest if I sleep? Yeah, absolutely. So, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Alex only really sleeps about four hours a night because okay. he uses a combination of alchemical stimulants and suppressants in order to spend extra time in his lab. Mm -hmm. So he's probably going through serious withdrawal. And he's either completely unable to fall asleep or passed out pretty much for 12 hours. Okay. So let's say it's evens for passed out. Alright, so yeah, he cannot sleep. Okay. Power through the night, as you're laying there unable to sleep, you hear a small, raspy voice coming from that little drain down on the floor. Mm hmm And it just says, My name's Derrett. What's your name? Alex. Is Alex short for something? Maybe. Derek short for something? Maybe. Are you also a prisoner here, I'm assuming? He asks what you've done. Uh, you know, a little bit of trespass, a little bit of murder. For a long time, there's silence. And you start to wonder if you'd ever heard this voice at all. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you hear it again. So I've decided I'll stoop so low as to talk to anyone, even a murderer. Do they deserve it? Yeah, I think so. What did they do? Tried to blow up a sizable part of the kingdom. Uh, probably trafficked in humans. A uh, good amount of magical mischief. Drop people into water and not see what parts of them come back up. Sick some... Have you ever heard of a displacer beast? They mostly eat deep gnomes, from my understanding. Sick some displacer beasts on some people. Uh, dropped magical all sorts of bullshit, like walls of fire. Not good people. Nothing you really want to get tangled up in, believe me. And you killed all of them? Nah. One of them got away. He has to Maybe more. I mean, I didn't... I, you know, I only... Of the ones I saw, one of them somehow got away magically. Did they work for someone? You know what a warlock is? It's some kind of wizard, isn't it? It's a wizard that gets their power by promising their soul or something similar to an extremely powerful, usually extraplanar creature. Is that what you that are? That is what I... If you recite that perfectly in Magical Knowledge 101, you will probably get that question right. He asks if that's what you are. Nope. But uh, everybody we've been working with is either working for or is a warlock from our understanding. That's what we're after. What are you in for? And there's just silence for a long time. And then you hear this extra planar creature. What do you think it wants? You know, I don't know. Did it ask you for something? Me personally? No. And there's silence for a long time. And he asks... What are you, human? Elf? No. 
Gnome. Deep Gnome. Surfer bin. Ever been to Deep Mercif? In the silence for a long time. And the voice does not speak again to you all night. Well, before I, you know, fitlessly lay down to go to sleep. Well, I'm hopefully getting out of here tomorrow, but if not, nice to make your acquaintance. We'll probably be here for a while. Seeker. Yo. Nope. You're going to go visit Warlock Spain, and you're going to call on her visit Warlock Spain. in the middle of the night. Yeah. And she answers her door wearing her bathrobe with bags of sleep under her eyes. And one of those, like, green mud masks on. Her her hair done up in curlers. She's high level <laughs> enough she shouldn't bother to sleep anymore. <laughs> no, she answers her door, but you've clearly roused her from sleep. Yeah. And, uh, Seeker will say, just kind of, like, say, hey, can I come in? Alex got picked up by the black jackets. And They're looking into the flying pig. She cranes her neck over. Well, she doesn't have to. You're a gnome. You're nothing tall uh, you're you, you're alone you haven't been followed and seeker will shake his head now she ushers you inside back into the same uh, receiving room that she brought you into before what did Alex do we were looking into a headquarters of these you know the demon worshippers we had been following this girl who had come to us looking for help and she disappeared. We took out a few of their guards, but someone must have tipped off the moss caps or the black jackets. They showed up at the base of the ladder and then took Alex in. So what is it you're asking of Warlock's Bay? I am going to, first of all, I'm going to, through the course of the conversation, try to figure out what she thinks about the black jackets like if we told her anything would she immediately tell them would she feel like that's her her duty are you asking her directly or are you trying to fish this out of conversation no i'm going to try to feel that out through the course of the conversation Make they, an insight. like my immediate like thing that i'm asking her for is asking her if she has any contacts with the black jackets or any way to help us out with this her answer to that question is a sort of solemn not anymore and make an insight check that is a... I'm going to burn my die on this. That is a 19. There seems to be no love lost between Warlock's Bane and the Black Jackets. As far as you can tell from the conversation, she thinks that they're competent enough at their job, but they're not thorough enough. And with a 19, what she kind of means by that is if a threat doesn't seem to be impacting the crown directly... Or if it's a corrupt black jacket who's being paid by some noble house or something. Uh, that if there's really an existential threat on the city itself, but it's not direct against some member of the nobility or against the king or against some other interests, the black jackets don't look into it to her satisfaction. They also don't seem to take a lot of their investigations far enough in by which I mean, if there was a demon running amok in the city, the Black Jackets would marshal some kind of response against it and slay it. That's not enough to get rid of a demon. There are techniques you have to use to actually lock it down, which they would not do. So you and get... Seeker will kind of... Oh, okay. As far as whether she's going to run to the Black Jackets, almost definitely not. And Seeker will kind of play up to that uh, kind of perception of them by saying, like, yeah, they we told them that we were here after this little girl. She, They didn't th seem to find it important. Um, and She asks if you're certain it was a little girl. I know it wasn't a fiend because I tossed some silver at it and it didn't react. She tells you, or rather she asks you, you're aware that there are magics that can hide the true nature of a creature from such divinations. Such that it wouldn't even be affected by it? No, I wasn't aware. Well, you are now. I I had my suspicions, if that's enough, but Gus seems completely convinced. She likes actually, Gus. Actually, if you could convince Gus of that yourself, that would be a great help, because he has been tr running himself ragged trying to go after this girl. <laughs> um, But moreover, like, then do you have any way that you can kind of... Have you run into, had a problem with the Black Jackets before? Like, 
what? How can we expect this to impact our investigation? Are we going to get Alex back? Probably what's going to happen is... She basically uh, confirms what the Black Jackets have told you. They're going to send an inspector around tomorrow. If they like what they hear and none of you have made an effort to run or anything, if they're convinced that you're acting in good faith, she thinks that they're probably on the up and up. As far as the investigation, probably what will happen is they'll take an active interest in the site for a little while. And if nothing comes of it immediately, they'll probably increase, they'll probably like put guards on the place. Uh, they might fill the ladder shaft with cement or whatever to keep people from going back down in there. Uh, basically, they'll try to put a lid on it instead of getting to the root of the problem. And from what you've told her, she sounds like they should get, you guys should get to the root of the problem instead. Okay, that sounds good to me. Uh, Seeker, however, is also going to, since it sounds like she's not going to immediately squirrel on the black jackets, we need to get some freaking information on what this hand is. And so Seeker is going to tell her, hey, we were going through this uh, investigation and we found a magical artifact. We brought it to a church in order to be cleansed. And they consulted with their god and told me that it was my duty in order to, to find some way to make use of it. So I've been trying to do that, but apparently this flying pig is interested in it as well. Do you know anything about it or any way that I could do what my god wants me to do? Did you bring it with her? Yeah. You brought so you let her look it over? Mm-hmm. I'll just point out, Scrappy is right there. He never allows a round to end without being five feet away from you. <laughs> I know. Seeker's trying to take a dump. Just Scrappy just staring at him. Calling at the door while you're inside, Jaranda. <laughs> you can she, open doors. She asks if you'll excuse her for a little while. Is it something that I could watch? She's, if you have some way of getting information, I'd be interested. She's going to take the hands down into her lab and try to figure out its source. And yeah, does she mind if I watch her do it? You seem like a trustworthy enough fellow, but she did not get to where she is. By, I mean, you guys have only known her for a couple of weeks. Yeah, fair enough. So she kind of leaves you in the receiving room. And an hour goes by. And another hour goes by. And you start seeing the sun creeping up outside. And you start to wonder, how early in the morning are those black jackets going to show up? And I'm not home. Oh, I mean, Seeker sleeps on the couch. He needs an hour rest at least. Okay. Um... Everybody who's sleeping tonight, back at the bar, is anybody doing anything else tonight? Aside from assembling my uh, every bit of information that we have on the flying pig. Okay. So yeah, you guys could all take the benefits of a long rest. Alex didn't take a long rest, correct? Because he's yep. twisting and turning. And Seeker, you can take a short rest. Okay. Shortly after dawn, Warlock's being shows back up. And she has... Three cloth bands tied around the hand at this point. One is binding the four fingers together. One is binding the thumb to the palm. And the other is looped around the thing's wrists. And all three of them are cloth of silver. And she says if, your, if Alexander's freedom were not at stake, I wouldn't return this to you. But she does. She tells you that it's not an artifact at all. It's a relic. And asks if you understand the difference. Um, I think I might, but that's enough that I'd rather have your perspective on the matter. She tells you that in broadest terms, an artifact is a thing that is built. It's a mechanism. Or something that is made. A relic is a part of someone that holds magic power. Ah, uh, like a saint's relic. Got it. She tells you that this hand... Uh, was part of an extraordinarily powerful vampire at some point in the distant, distant past. And that its purpose in the world today is to mark more vampires. Just by this thing existing, it can cause, if left unchecked long enough, an army of the undead to rise under whoever controls the power inside of it. 
She doesn't think anybody in Dunfoss, except maybe some of the oldest sages at Tylesness Apt, would have the power to actually command this relic in that way. But? There's no but. That's just what her what she's turned up. Then why are you giving it back? Because if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to convince the Black Jackets to let Alexander go. They're going to ask questions right. about it. And if you tell them that you took it across town and gave it to her, first of all, now she's got black jackets at her house. You think that it's something we should even tell the black jackets about? Or are they going to take it and then just toss it into a hole and then we're going to get vampires? (laughs) (laughs) She asks you if you're willing to pay that price if it means Alexander, if the alternative means Alexander stays locked up. Alexander wouldn't want me to. She asks how much money you can get together on very short notice. I mean, within the next 12 hours. And not, like, promises. She means, like, coin. Like, gold, preferably. Uh, depends what for. And if I can convince someone it's in their best interest. (laughs) She doesn't have anybody in the black jackets that she can buy a favor off of. But she might have some that she can turn with coin. And this is a very big ask. What she proposes is you take the hand today. If they ask for it, turn it over. And if that happens, the coin that you use, she'll be able to secure the hand back from their vaults. And then you can decide what to do with it after that. But this is going to cost more gold than she has on hand. Does this need to happen immediately? Or is it something where if they take the hand, then we can come to you later with the gold? She says if she doesn't if it's not something they do in the next day or so, they risk not knowing where the hand is taken to. All they right. might lose it. Uh, if they happen to ask about it, then... Okay. I'll keep that in mind. She says that someday she hopes that one of you comes to visit her when there's not, like, dire warnings and ill tidings in the air. I thought you liked dire warnings and ill tidings. No, she doesn't. It's just her day job. I mean, <laughs> she likes list. she likes working in her garden and talking well, to gophers and shit. Well, well, you know, if her name were like Weedsbane, we wouldn't be bringing this shit to her. But her last name is Warlock's Bane, so that's on her. <laughs> if you learn to love destroying warlocks, then you'll never work a day in your life, Warlock's Bane. As long as these three bands are tied around this hand... The thing cannot reach out into other minds. Whatever. She's not sure if that's a thing that the hand can do on a short term or not. Without having a master to control it. But better safe than sorry. Alright. Under no circumstances should you cut those bands off. You got it. What would happen if I I cut the bands off? She doesn't know. (laughs) Nothing (laughs) nothing good, probably. Uh, No, she suspects that some of these relics depending on if they have an intelligence living in them, can reach out and corrupt surrounding minds. Kind of the same way your detect thoughts work. Kind of just putting feelers out to see who's out there. She doesn't know if this hand can do that or not. If it can, these bands will prevent it from doing so. Okay. Anybody else doing anything at the barge before the inspector shows up tomorrow morning? I'm shoving Hecarim down in the thing and making him clean up his piss. Oh, he's already done that. Right. He's already cleaned up that room. I'll tell him that, like, when we're not... I'll tell him to go down there and just go to sleep, and I'll I'll deal with him later. And he's... I'm not mad. He has to to turn him out. No, I'm not... I'm actually not mad at him because he did it because he thought he was helping. Oh, you're a good friend. That's just... That's it. That's... That was a case of ignorance. Ignorance can be fixed. You are extremely lucky Alex wasn't there. If it's not, if it happens again, that's a case of stupidity, and then I throw him in the ocean. Alex, tomorrow morning a man comes to your cell, Mm -hmm. and all of your belongings have been packed up, Mm -hmm. uh, and are being carried by one of these moss caps. Okay. And an inspector of the black jackets as well. They trust you had a good night's sleep. And the straw was comfortable enough. I've had... I've been in dorms that were worse. 
He asks if you'll join him for breakfast before you set out. Is this the inspector? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, by all means. He introduces himself as George Rowe. George Rowe is one, probably a name that you've heard before, actually. Is that one name or two? Just one. Okay. Uh, which is actually notable. He doesn't have a family name. He was a commoner that was just extremely skilled in certain types of magic, worked as a moss cap for who knows how long, started working with Hawthorne House, worked his way up to one of the lead inspectors. He's one of the big wigs. He's one of the big guys. Okay. Make an Arcana check. Sure. So he's bringing you up to uh, a canteen inside the structure where you're in, where other guardsmen are taking their morning breakfast, some of them staying around congregating during a shift change. You're brought up a pretty standard breakfast, lump of bread, an egg that's cold by the time you receive it, glass of fresh water. So 17 on Arcana. 17 on Arcana. As the food is brought out to you, you're skeptical. Because the big ex- inspector doesn't go around having breakfast with prisoners. Mm-hmm. If it were you, you would enchant this food somehow to do something. Hmm. I mean, they could have enchanted my food to do something at any point I was here, though. So. They could? And you eat? Yeah. Sorry, the cops are Okay, I'm going to need you to make a saving throw. Is that against magic or a spell? Yes, it is. Both. Uh, Int, Wiz, or Charisma? <laughs> it is going to be a Charisma saving throw. How do we do? Seven. Seven. So, after you munch on the bread and half of your cold egg... You find yourself under the influence of Zone of Truth. Mm -hmm. You cannot deliberately lie while under... You know how this works. Yeah, yeah. Not your first rodeo. After you're done eating, uh, he first asks you to list the names of all of the other employees and associates at Flumthink. Yeah, I list them, and I uh, specifically mention that Kevin and Linda are... uh not like they're not investigators okay and, and do the best to imply that means that they don't actually fight anyone if it comes down to that he asks if you know the identity of this flying pig wish i did he asks for you to confirm for him and he has a slip of parchment with the flying pig's insignia on it that you've seen many times now he asks you to confirm that this is the mark associated with this entity yes he asks you whether you're aware of smuggling into or out of Dunfoss of any magical items owned by or sought by this entity. Yeah. And he asks uh, what those items are and where they and if you know their current whereabouts. Um, I'll list the I'll mention the uh, sheets. Do we still have those? The sales? I think so. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll we, mention... we gave them back. They're in the warehouse of that noble. Okay, so I'll mention those, and I'll mention the boxes, and I'll explain how they were they detonated, and I'll mention it's not technically magical, but there was a bunch of dragon powder. We also stopped them from uh, getting their hands on. Hey, you don't mention the hand. Nope. He then asks quite a lot of questions about just, in general, like the magical capabilities of your various comrades. Mm -hmm. What are their magic specialties? Are all of them associated with guilds in good standing? And you're just answering these truthfully? Uh, I'm not 100% sure that Gus is in good standing, but I think he is. I mean, you tell him that that, Gus has joined the Cobblestone Wizards, though. Yeah, but I don't don't know his standing. He's, He's joined very recently, and like the others, I... I'm not. I've never investigated that by myself. The others were in guilds when we formed Flumfink, and thus I did background checks on all of them. But Gus is standing. He has a badge. I don't know anything beyond that. Um, I trust Gus at this point, so I'm not particularly working on investigating it. But for the rest of them, I can vouch for him. And kind of ominously, 
as you're finishing up and you're about to set out to leave, he asks you uh, if you understand the gravity of the situation you're in. If you're found, if you stand accused of these murders, the blowback on your father will be considerable. Yep. Do you believe see... me? Few people are as understanding of what that will mean as I am. Do you seem concerned at all? Uh under the zone of truth, no. <laughs> Sorry, he's the one that's zoned the truth to me. And he and the moss cap carrying your gear and you travel back to the barge for the second round of interrogations. Which we does do. the zone of truth wear off over that period of time? It does. It doesn't. What does it last? Okay. Like, ten minutes, if that? Yeah. Yeah, minutes. I think maybe ten minutes. Yeah. And it takes longer than that to get back to the barge. So when we pick it up next week, we will do some more interrogation, unless a kraken attacks. Uh, uh... That, that that would just be my freaking luck. That wouldn't be out of left field. I mean, be out of the ocean. I mean, er, <laughs> everything field terrible field. has happened to us lately. Well, like why why like why like a little thing like a crack and be Wait, the, be ev- the... everything terrible has happened to you? Yeah, like, there's one time like this session, I got a spell cast on me. It caused <laughs> I mean... these like slurping tentacles and acid. <laughs> no. I, I went through it for an entire campaign. I don't want to hear it. I am inured to that, to, to complaining. I'm going to go dark for two minutes while I add up some experience, and you guys can think about your personal blips and your party blips, and I will be back in just a moment. I spent two rounds in a wall of fire. That was pretty awful. <laughs> yeah, but your companion didn't cast that on you. <laughs> uh, you, so, you okay, even... so party goals. Uh, uh, creative. I was gonna say party goals, Alex, for jumping on the grenade of going to go going to the prison cell. For uh, okay, I'm okay with that. Creative. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. I want to give it to something related to the checkerboard. <laughs> Lucius for checkerboard realizing Yeah, for realizing that the checkerboard pattern is what was getting us killed. No, it wasn't. It was helping. No, it wasn't. All right, so uh badass. Come back to creative. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that to Lucius for uh, the the checkerboard thing. But just I just wanted to be related to the checkerboard. I can't think of anything else. Well, that should uh, be the intangible then. Okay. Uh, the um, uh, badass, because I ran out of the wall yeah. of fire and, and actually through the wall of fire. I'm I, gonna, I, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that one. I'm good with that. Yeah. Intangibles, Lucius for breaking up the checkerboard formation. Right. Yeah. So it's only creative. creative. Um, Seeker. For telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty creative for Seeker. <laughs> Seeker loves doing the truth because there's so much you can tell people and they'll believe. Yeah, half truths don't register. <laughs> Note that I didn't mention the hand. Uh, he didn't ask for all of the items in the town. Nope, he just asked any. if we knew of any items. And she's yep. like, absolutely, I do. <laughs> I can get you a receipt. <laughs> We had cause on Discord, I don't know, last night or the night before or something, to talk a little bit about uh, like NPCs in D&D and how the DM's important NPCs and the player's important NPCs are almost never the same group of people. Yeah. But I think that so far, Warlock's Bane has gone over to the degree that I wanted her to so far in the campaign. 
So maybe after five years, I finally got one right. Like I, hit, so, I hit the note correctly this time. Which is good. All know. I'm hearing is that all I've seen what we've done to Warlock's Bane is annoy her. <laughs> no, I don't think that. I mean, to me, the biggest problem is Warlock's Bane was out of town for some undisclosed period of time. She does I, leave her manor quite a lot. I, I've been, I, I think we've annoyed like, what, four? Four separate organizations into not wanting to, anything to do with this? <laughs> like, the, uh, That's what? The, fine. It's fine. It's it's what? The Church of Nimber Nimbus and. No, the Church of Nimber Nimbus we're in good with. Uh, it was Garl Glitter Gold. Garl Glitter Gold. Garl Glitter Gold. I am an avatar of that god. <laughs> And they have to deal with me. <laughs> so, what we really need is a temple of Muhammad again to destroy all of these evil artifacts that we're going to be coming across. Here's the uh, here's yeah, the there, question. There no, no. Here's the question. You're going to have to time. continuously ask yourself. Yeah. Is Garl Glittergold is a trickster god? Sure. How long am I going to listen to Seeker talk about how he's his avatar before Garl Glittergold takes his finger down to Earth? erases all of your experience and just give like forces you to take one level in cleric <laughs> all of my experience well that all, sound like him. all of your it's experience prank, to the next level it's a trick it's a prank bro you <laughs> he's, he's done that once before so I don't have. think it's out of the realm of possibility well, level yeah one but here's the thing though if he did that that would just make me right <laughs> <laughs> and then i owe that to I own that temple afterwards. What's, oh what's my your god! Score? <laughs> don't don't do it because he's already insufferable. The heaven yeah. is actually right. He's already insufferable. I love it. <laughs> I think having an avatar of a god would be pretty cool in Flumfank. I'm just yep. saying. <laughs> we could put it on our business card. Except Birdie's the god, so. Yes. No. 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 Can we do that? That would be amazing. Who wants to make a case for alignment, ideal, or flaw this week? I'll go. Go. Uh, neutral good. I must be a benefactor and strive to leave things in a better state than I found it uh, for forgiving uh, Hecram and like I'm going to offer him a job on the barge. Okay. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Ideals, uh, my companions are my support structure. I must do what I can to protect them from themselves for rushing through a wall of fire and trying to hit this woman repeatedly to break her concentration so Lucius wouldn't burn to death. You guys got... I, I was trying to do the metrics in my head and see if she had one more round that she could safely withstand potential damage. And if so, I would have probably killed Gus. But you guys pushed her hit points further... Yeah, not if I could get line of sight on her, she didn't. <laughs> I got nine attacks on that woman and missed seven of them. <laughs> so, I'm not happy. I am not giving you haste anymore. I mean, you'll probably never see her again. She's probably gone for good. Who who are you going to give haste to? Nobody. Actually, no, give it to give it to uh, Alexander because he has that freaking gun that does 40 damage a shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, those displacer beasts had really low AC. No, that that was displacer base AC. No, it, yeah, it was low because their their defenses they disappear, but they can't disappear if they're dead. Yeah. Anything else uh, for Gus? Yeah, my flaw, drunk Gus, has hello for the whole situation <laughs> being with Corio being entirely my fault, <laughs> and like me acknowledging it's my fault, grabbing this man by the ear and marching him down to the end to apologize like he's a five year old. What are you doing with him? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, I just we'll, feel bad for him. We'll find out. I feel out bad session. for him. He lost his job and his sister died. And man, I can't turn that kind of song. Yeah, no, I'm going to be the only man around here losing his job. <laughs> if Alex <laughs> had gone back to the bars, you would have turned him into the mall's mouse caps for assault. We should charge him rent if he's really going to be staying here. We can discuss that next week. Anything else, Gus? <laughs> no, that's all. Oh, the video. Okay. And who wants so to go all. next? I'll go. I'll go. I heard Seeker first. All right, I've got Chaotic Good. Good is only taking from those that can afford it. Chaos is taking them for all they're worth. Mm -hmm. For telling the Black Jackets that we made the deal for the Illusion's closing, because otherwise the girl wouldn't believe us if we were getting nothing out of it. Okay. Because Seeker doesn't think that people will trust you if you aren't getting something from it. Mm -hmm. uh, opportunity is everywhere if you can see it. 
for sending out messages asking for help under the guise of warning them that they could be looked into by the Black Jackets. Okay. And anybody can be fooled, except for me, for burning, like, three frickin' spell slots on a web out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> so that she couldn't counterspell me. <laughs> and what does Alex have? Uh, alignment lawful neutral, always billing, be willing to take the law into your own hands, but no further, for his malicious compliance with the zone of truth. <laughs> uh, ideal, nope, not that one, flaw, I'm sure we can handle this for holstering his gun and nodding to Gus when he wanted to shoot the wizard. Okay. And who's next? I'll go. Lucius. <laughs> I have lawful neutral, take your place in society, work well for your fellow people, take care of your own for talking his way out of the, uh, for talking, for helping talk his way out of everybody getting arrested as opposed to just one person. Okay. Uh, I have knowledge is paramount for, um, making sure to, for insisting that we've got, that we should be, that we should be able to stay on this, on the, on this, on this flying pig investigation. Okay. And that's all I got. And what does Florian have for me? All right. Florian. True neutral. Sometimes you have laws, but laws are stricter. Sometimes you have to be good, but there's no way to define good. For going invisible when the black jacket showed up, <laughs> and then relenting and making himself vis vis visible if he can't get away with it. Okay. And flaws, there's always an explanation, and we must always consider it for trying to tell the black jackets that. Yes, they might be perceiving this, but it is not the complete thing that they should be perceiving. It's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which always goes over when you say that to the police. That's always always. <laughs> always. I will give one blip for the most creative solution to a problem this session. That was Oh gosh, I don't remember creative. That was Seeker for telling the truth. Yep. <laughs> does that count as a creative solution for this group? For Seeker, it does. <laughs> Who furthered the party's goals the most? Alexander. Why? Because he's Alexander. We. What, it was for a specific reason. It was for. Um... For going to prison. Yes. <laughs> for <laughs> for prison. jumping on the prison grenade. Who is the badass this week? Gus for running through a wall of fire to hit a woman multiple times. It's pretty good. To assault a woman. <laughs> you guys worked really hard to drop that wall of fire. And we have one oh for God. intangibles. Mm -hmm. It was just for breaking the, the checkerboard strat, which was failing. <laughs> I'm also awarding one blip to the group for successfully navigating the interrogation. That was very well done. I had lots of ways that could have gone much, much worse for you. <laughs> I haven't, like, designed an adventure around, like, going through a Dunfoss, like, criminal trial or anything. But I understand that such a thing is always going to be a distinct possibility. And we know how much you like trial sessions. So fun. <laughs> Uh, so, everybody's got zero blips except for Seeker, who has all of his. <laughs> Thanks, Seeker. So, Alec, am I, am I correct in assuming that Seeker is rolling his that he gets over, and everybody uh -huh. else is just saving his? Uh, Lucius uh, yeah. is taking our straw poll for the week. Oh, God. So, Alex, you're going to next session with four blips. Florian, you're going to the next one with three. Gus is going in with six. Mm -hmm. Lucius is going in with five. And Seeker, you are rolling over five. Uh huh. Blips are worth are... 250, if I'm remembering correctly. We're level five, yes? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Alright, and they're each worth 250. And I'm going to award you, you probably want some encounter experience, I would assume. I would hope so, with with how much we we bled for that. Displacer Beast Encounter. You, you know what I'm really <laughs> upset about is I bet you the pelts from those Displacer Beasts would be worth some money. Yeah, probably. Five. Or I could use them as components to build something. 700 experience apiece for five Displacer Beasts. 
which I decided that like the standard Displacer Beast ability sounded boring, so I gave them a better ability. Isn't the standard Displacer Beast ability just they have the link? They have disadvantage. You have disadvantage to attack them, but if you hit them, they lose that ability until their next turn. Mm -hmm. Alright, when we come back next week, we will see what the Magic Police want with you guys. I mean, it was it was inevit inevitable. Let's be honest. Yeah, probably. Thanks everybody for playing.